What's going on guys, Zuko back with another Last Epoch video. Hope you're all doing very, very well. I hope you're enjoying yourselves in Last Epoch. The server seems to be a little bit more stable these days. The launch was a little bit messy, but things are getting better for sure. I want to talk to you today about the Circle of Fortune. This is one of the two like loot factions that you can join in the game. And it's going to help you acquire loot in the end game. This system is the best late game loot acquisition system i've ever seen in an action rpg like period there, there's nothing that beats this thing it is so incredibly good we're going to get into it. i've played hundreds of hours of d2 d3 even d4 maybe not hundreds of hours of d4 now but ton hundreds and hundreds of hours of path of exile i've played these games i'm telling you this system with its rank rewards and its prophecies are incredible it is an incredible way to help you target farm loot in the end game which is exactly what you want to be doing that is the point of these games you don't want to be running around in the end game randomly hoping to find gear you want to be able to find it deterministically that's what this circle of fortune system allows you to do so we're going to talk about this why it's good why you should definitely join this faction right now so when you first get to the end game not quite the end game act nine is the majelka area it's the desert area it's the final act of the game it's after you do lagon with all the storm stuff you kill the god under the sea there and then you come over here to the desert you wash up on the shores of serectha you make your way to majelka and then you're presented with an option you can go join the observatory with the circle of uh, fortune or you can join the merchants guild by going to the bazaar I highly encourage you to go to this this faction here. You're going to get here, and this is what it looks like, okay? First NPC is Galila. I think I'm saying that right. She has an inventory here, which is very cool. It's actually, the items in here are quite specific from what I, like, exclusive is what I'm saying, from what I've seen. Like, this prophecy staff, plus one to all minion skills, that, I've, I, I have not seen one of these suckers drop in my maps, in my echoes, so I'm not sure... If this is entirely true, but I think a lot of the items on here seem fairly exclusive to her. And anyway, so there's items here that you can just buy for favor. And let me talk about this. Whenever you do anything in the game, you're going to earn favor. Okay? Slaying enemies, completing quests, yada, yada, yada. Okay? That's going to rank you up on the rank rewards right here. And you can see I'm up to level 5. These rank rewards are insane, by the way, just on their own. If this was all you got out of this system, it's still insane. You get 35% um, chance for enemies to drop twice as many items. 45% chance for runes of ascendance to be preserved. Those are the runes that upgrade an item into a uh, unique. That's very cool. Idle drop chance is good. Exalted affix chance is good. Monolith echo rewards. 35% chance to double the rewards from an echo. I just did a, an experience echo. And it gave me six books that gave you a thousand experience each instead of three. Like, that's crazy. Um, legendary potential chance. Like, this stuff scales into the late game. T7 affix chance. Rare to exalted chance. So, this is really, really good. Even just on its own, it's going to improve your ability to find items of all kinds. And to really improve your uh, loot acquisition like it's just going to feel better better items are going to be dropping period but that's not even the best part about this but this is the first part here the best part about this is going to be the prophecies i'm going to walk you through all these in a minute if you guys have ever played path of exile there used to be a system in that game called prophecy prophecy league it was a whole league right it had a lady and she gave you these random prophecies and you had to go fulfill them and then you would get rewards this is the exact same system as prophecy from path of exile but this is deterministic you get to choose which prophecies you want to do and the rewards that are in them and that is why this is so much better because the prophecy system in poe was like just really random and it was pretty much underwhelming at all times it wasn't really a good system this system is good look at this right here <clears throat> here's what i have to do this is actually a really big prophecy. It's kind of a, a lame one in some ways. But I have to go kill Raya, the Black Sun, in the Black Sun timeline, which is a monolith, right? Black Sun timeline is right down here, level 66. I have to kill the final boss in this monolith three times. If I do it three times, I'll get three exalted body armors. Now, that's actually not a super great one. That's a pretty low value one there. But here's some other ones. I have to go kill one rare enemy in the lightless arbor dungeon and i get two exalted helmets that is pretty good 
So even if I just go do the Lightless Arbor Dungeon and don't actually finish the entire Lightless Arbor Dungeon, I get an additional layer of value right here because of this prophecy. So you can load up multiple prophecies for multiple dungeons, or you can load up monolith prophecies. You can load up arena prophecies. You can do whatever you want. And they're going to give you these crazy rewards. Here's some really good monolith ones here. Uh, Death of a Void Whore. i got to find some Void Whores. I don't know where those are, but if I find them, I kill six of them, I get two helmets, okay? Death of uh, <laughs> hashtag, 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 giant scorpion. Uh, and that's in the monolith, so it's just random, right? I just go in my monolith and look for a scorpion. Try to do one of the monoliths, maybe, that looks more like a desert. And then maybe I'm more likely to end up getting a scorpion. Um, death of Abomination, Fall the Outcast Timeline. So again, there are very specific things you can target. Yeah. When you talk to this lady, She's Galilia, she sells record. you lenses. And we're going to talk about these in a second. These you're going to put into the telescopes up above. Now, let's go up above here. You're going to talk to this guy initially to get a quest. He's going to talk about prophecies, yada, yada. Then you're going to go to the lenses. There are four lenses in this room. This is the most important part of this system. There's a lens for weapons and for armor and for uh, idols and then for accessories. When you click on them, this is what it ends up looking like. Make sure you go to the bottom right corner and click on always show reward icons. If you don't have it clicked, it's not going to show you. You have to like scroll over top of them. So just click this. It looks way better. Here's how this works. This is right now the weapon telescope. It's going to have weapons for me. If I click on one of these icons, then I have committed to doing that prophecy. So be careful. Don't, don't just click on them. Be very careful. This requires Arena Tier 3. That's kind of annoying. What you do is you want to take this system and target farm pieces of gear that you're looking for. Okay? So if I go north, click on the north one. This gives me to the armor. <clears throat> nope. What's going on here? Oh, my bad. There we go. This is the armor one. If I click on the west one, it's going to take me to the idle one and keys and stuff. So I can get arena keys from here, four of them. I can get uh, really, really good idols. Those are small Atarian idols. Those aren't very good. And then if I go down to the south, I can get accessories, rings, unique rings, exalted rings. Every single time I, I go in here, I can re-roll one of these windows. If I don't like these options right now, personally, I'm looking for helmets right now. I'm going to re-roll this. Boom. Let's see what we get. We get any Oh, I got exalted helmets. Now I have to kill a boss. In any of the monoliths with 50 corruption. That's the condition. There must be 50 con uh, corruption on my monolith and I'll get four helmets. That's actually pretty good. It's a fairly expensive one though. It costs 2250 favor. I only have 3465, okay? So why don't we pass on this? Let's see if we can get a better one. There's no exalted helmets here. There are exalted gloves, which I'm kind of interested in. So, Death of Immortal Eye. The Immortal Eye is a very particular mob in the game. They're these spidery... Uh, not spider. They're, they're kind of like these... Um, I don't know. They got, they're like, a, like an octopus type looking thing. So, I'm going to actually take that one. That one's pretty good. Then it's going to re-roll this whole thing for me. Gloves. Ooh, helmets. Uh, again, this requires 120 corruption. All I have to do is kill the final boss in the um, Stolen Lance timeline, but it does require 120 corruption. Corruption, that's a lot for me right now. I'm going to re-roll this really quickly, see what happens. Uh, some unique helmets. You can see how this works, okay? If you're looking for a specific piece of gear, you can target farm in here. And you can see I've been trying to do that. Exalted helmets here. Exalted helmets. Exalted helmets. Exalted gloves. Exalted helmets again. Exalted helmets. So this is what I'm looking for right now. I'm getting as many prophecies as I can that have to do with exalted helmets because that's what I want. Now, lenses. The lenses go in the bottom right corner of the screen. I'm blocking it right now. Let me put myself right there. Down in the bottom right, there are lenses. You can put some very, very powerful effects into these, um, these telescopes. And you can do it for every single telescope. Whatever you want to be doing, you can put them in. There's three slots for these lenses. There are normal lenses that you can get that increase the chance of you finding something. So when you, like, re-roll that um, prophecy window, when you re-roll it for armor, let's say, if you have this lens in here, you get a 10% increased chance per rank to find helmets. So I'm, this is, uh, that's, yeah, 
that just I was I was looking at the rank for a second, but that's that's something else. So you can keep you can grab any of these. You want to find body armor, you want to find belts, you want to find weapons. I have one that gives me two-handed maces, twenty percent increased chance per rank to find two-handed maces. That's pretty huge. That's what I wanted for my build. I have a really good sword now that I'm really fun, having fun with, but. That's what the regular, these little regional lenses, they're the, they're the baseline lenses, okay? Then you can go to greater lenses. These are much, much more powerful in their effect. Here's what these things can do. These have a chance to block um, where you're finding these prophecies from. So, for example, 100% reduced chance for prophecies to have arena events. So, if you don't ever want to do a prophecy in an arena, get this thing. If you don't ever want to do a prophecy in a monolith, do this thing. That's a really bad idea. Don't do that. But that's something you could do. If you don't ever want to see a prophecy in a dungeon event, then you can get this one. If you don't ever want to see a prophecy in a campaign event, you can get this one. So it blocks. You can also block the corruption. You can block whatever you want. Let's say you love doing dungeons and you're like, I just want to stack like 10 prophecies into one dungeon run. And then you go into that dungeon run and you just like, go crazy. That's what you can do with this. So it's also, there's a couple of other really powerful ones here. 15% increased uh, chance per rank to find unique items, set items. You can add these to your telescopes, and then they will influence what you're able to see. So you can see on this, on this idol one down here, I have an increased chance to find grand idols. I don't want small idols. I want grand idols. So I can increase my chance of doing that. The one that I've honed in on the most right now is the armor one. I've blocked my chance for it to have dungeon events, and I've blocked the chance to have arena events. I actually think I'm going to change this one. I actually want to have helmets here, and I, I, wanna, I actually don't mind if they're in a dungeon event. So let's re-roll this now, and we're hopefully going to get exalted helmets in a dungeon event. That's what we're looking for, okay? Okay, we didn't get helmets, but there you go. Look at this. Any dungeon tier 3 exalted armor... Let's, uh, that's Soulfire Bastion Tier 3. Let's do this again. Okay, we didn't get any Exalted ones. Once again, that's unlucky. Any Dungeon Tier 3. This is a huge one. Now, nah, it costs way too much. I'll have to go farm some more favor, but... I have to kill rare enemies in any dungeon. It's got to be a Tier 3 dungeon. And I get five helmets, guys. Five. Count them. One, two, three. Oh, you can't, because I'm blocking. That's hilarious. Let me go there. That's better. Five helmets. You can see it now. That's the point. Let's reroll it one more time here. See if we get any exalted helmets. Uh, exalted gloves? Not bad. We are getting helmets. We just keep getting unique ones. Lightless Arbor Tier 3. Soulfire Bastion Tier 3. Again, five unique helmets. Let's roll it again. Exalted gloves. You can see how this works, okay? If I go over to the weapons. These are all garbage for me. I'm not looking for anything here. For the weapons, I'm going to have reduced chance to find it in... Uh, actually, I don't mind dungeons. We're going to get rid of that dungeon one. Because I don't mind dungeons now. I, I used to not like them, but I like them now. Let's get a higher chance to find maces. We're going to re-roll this, see what happens. Let me go way over to the corner here so it's a little bit easier. Okay, we did get um, exalted two-handed maces. There you go. Death of giant scorpion in the monolith. I don't know what this giant scorpion is. You, you get the point here, okay? That's what you end up doing. If you want to look around for whichever, if you need rings, I actually do need some rings right now. I can't re-roll anymore. The way you get favor is by slaying enemies or completing quests, okay? All, that's all you're doing. You're just slaying enemies for the most part in the monolith, and that's going to get you the ability to come here and re-roll your favors and get whatever you want. So that's the basic system right there. I'll just show you it in action really, really quickly on my stream last night. I was looking at a can I was looking at this one here. Death of an exiled mage condition none. I get four unique body armors. So I was like, okay, I can do that. So I go in here, I'm running around this map, and I suddenly see on the on the map icon here that there is a mage. So I'm like, ooh, let's get down there and get him. So I come down here, I'm like, come here, buddy. I kill this mage, and we end up getting our crazy reward. This is so easy to do. This one was, like, just completely free. So sometimes you can get really lucky, and you can find rewards that are like this. And you can see the exiled mage does not normally drop four unique. So it was that was from the prophecy right there. And it says, prophecy fulfilled at the top. So that was pretty cool. That was an exciting moment. I got some decent uniques out of it. So that is what this system can provide for you. I think this is just so so much better than joining the trade faction like i haven't tried it yet i haven't actually i've been to the bazaar but i haven't like tried to join that faction but 
This, to me, represents an incredible end game system that allows you to target farm loot. And this, to me, feels like the very first season, the very first cycle of Last Epoch. Like, in, in, in other games, like, you know, Diablo 4 has seasons and Path of Exile has leagues, right? And they have really, really powerful, like, mechanics associated with them. Diablo 4, not so much, but let's focus on Path of Exile, which does leagues very, very well. This, to me, feels like a perfect, like, opening league mechanic or cycle mechanic. You start out, and it's very low, but you start getting these rewards right away. These are the rewards that you unlock right away. These incredible buffs to your loot acquisition. And then, once you hit Act 9, you can start getting into the late game stuff. You start getting these prophecies. You start getting some really powerful lenses. You put the lenses on your telescopes. They are going to direct you to the gear that you're looking for. You can target farm whatever gear you are looking for. I need a helmet desperately that gives me plus to the level of some of my skills same with my chess piece i'm eventually going to have to get a chess piece that gives me plus to the levels of the skills that i'm trying to that i'm using most frequently so this system allows you to do that and that is what is so amazing about it that is what's so fun about it you can keep coming back here you keep spending your fortune keep trying to find the items that you're looking for and you will eventually be rewarded for that and and, it, and then you can go and do these quests and get them done and find the loot that you're looking for so in the late game, this is going to help you, like, make your build. Flesh out your build is what I was going to say. It didn't sound right. This is going to help you really create the build that you're looking for because you can target farm the gear that is weakest on your character. Right now, I have a really weak helmet for me, and I have a pretty weak ring down here. There's some really good stats on these things, but they're weak for what I'm trying to do. So now I know that, and now I can go target farm that gear with this system, the Circle of Fortune. So that's what I wanted to do. You guys wanted to show you this system in detail, show you exactly how to use it, and you can now use this and craft it towards your build. Make sure you come in here and figure out exactly what you want to be looking for, and then go find it. It's going to be amazing. The rank rewards also just start getting absolutely ridiculous in the end here. When a set item would drop, there's a chance that the full set would drop instead. Um, items from Prophecies are duplicated. That's going to be completely nuts. Imagine if I was if I was target farming these uh, helmets, right? Four exalted helmets. I can get eight exalted helmets instead. So it just ramps up. It ratchets up the amount of loot that you're able to get with this system uh, once you get to the final end of the reward zone. So that's it, guys. That is the Circle of Fortune in a nutshell. I think you would be kind of silly to not take this on your character. Like, I, again, I don't know how good the market is, but I don't think it's better than this. This is just the best, like, late-game loot acquisition system that I have ever seen in any action RPG, and it is a lot of fun to mess around with, and it is very, very rewarding when you do. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know about your experiences with the Circle of Fortune. If you have some pictures you want to share with me or anything, jump in the Discord down below and show me some of the stuff you guys. We have a we have a Last Epoch channel in the Discord now, so go check it out. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.